So I was updating the pattern some. Okay, so for row 14, remember from now on you'll always be chaining three and turning. So you're going to slip stitch in your chain three. I'm going to try to speak more generally because uh, it's just a basic pattern. You don't need to worry about counting how many times you chain three and put it in the chain three. It can get tiresome. So you're just going to continue to chain three and slip stitch in the chain three, chain three, slip stitch in the next chain three until you reach uh, your first chain five space. Then you'll chain three and you will slip stitch in that first chain five space. Then you'll chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and you'll slip stitch in the next chain five space. Then you will chain five and slip stitch in your next chain five space. Chain five slip stitch in your next chain five space. Now you'll have three chain five spaces. As your, as your piece grows, it'll actually become a little looser here. So after you repeat this whole set about three or so more times, you'll actually wanna change the two chain fives before this middle one here to a chain three as well. So you'll be doing chain three, chain three, chain three until you reach the middle peak one where you'll put a chain five and then you'll do your chain three and your chain five chain anyway that's that's your repeat but I just wanted to point it out because later on when I start to explain this it may help you that I kind of talk about it now of this chain five on your chain fives area when you're making this middle peak area for next row you can reduce it a little bit there before and after. Okay, so once you have your chain five and you slip stitch in your chain five three times, then you'll start your chain threes again. So chain three, slip stitch in your chain three, and you're going to continue to chain three and slip stitch till you reach your chain five space again. And since we're still, we'll do our chain three, put it in the chain first chain five, and then we'll now do our chain fives. But later, we'll just continue to do chain three one more time. But for now, we're going to do full chain five, slip stitch in the chain five. Do that two more times. Chain five, slip stitch in the chain five. Chain five slip stitch in the chain five. Now after you've done the done that three times you're going to move back to your chain three again. So chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. Chain three, slip stitch in your chain three. So chain three, slip stitch in your chain five and then you're going to do your chain five and slip stitch three times. So chain five, slip stitch for a second time, then chain five and slip stitch in the next one. Then again you'll be doing your chain three and slip stitch and this time for row 14 you will just end your row after you've chained three, slip stitch in the ending chain three, then you're done. You no longer have to go into the bottom of the uh, chain three anymore. Just chain three, slip stitch in the last chain three, and then you can chain three and turn. And that is the end of 14. Again, you're going to slip stitch in your chain three, your first chain three, and then you're just going to chain three and slip stitch. until you reach your, your chain five, which this is a chain three still, so one, two, three. Okay. Okay, this is our first of our three 
chain five spaces. So we're going to chain three. Oh, we're going to be moving in and just doing uh, our peak stitch here. So you're going to need to chain three and slip stitch in this next chain five space. So you'll chain three and slip stitch all the way until you get to your middle chain five space. So chain three, slip stitch in your chain five. This is your middle peak. So you'll chain two and do your peak stitch here by doing your four double crochets. Chain one and four double crochets. And then you'll chain two. You'll slip stitch in your chain five and then you'll start your chain threes again and remember you're going to be doing your chain threes well up into your chain fives as well so chain three and start slip stitching Three. Okay, this is our three chain five areas. So you'll chain three and slip stitch in that first one. And then you'll chain two and do your peak stitch. One, two, three, four. Chain one. Then one, two, three, and four. Then you'll chain two and secure it in the next chain five space. So if you notice, it takes three, three sections basically to make one peak because you have the chain two and the chain five before it. Then you've got your peak worked in the next chain five and then you chain three and slip stitch in the next chain five. So your peaks take up all three of those chain five spaces. So once you've got done with that, you'll start your chain three and slip stitching. You can continue to do this until we reach our chain five space again. This is our first, this is our chain five space we're slip stitching in now. So then we'll start our peak. So chain two and start your final peak here by putting your four double crochets. Chain one, two, three, then four double crochets. We're running out of yarn again. Four double crochets. One more. And then again, you'll chain two and secure it in that chain five. Now you're just going to chain three until the very end of your row. So chain three and slip stitch. Chain three and slip stitch. Chain three, slip stitch. Chain three and slip stitch. And that will end row 15. So again, you're going to be chaining three and slip stitching in all of your chain three spaces. Keep on chaining three until you get to your your chain two here. You'll be slip stitching your last chain three in that chain two. So it's going to be all chain threes until you get to your chain two, and you know that that last chain three that slip stitch in your chain two will end your chain three and slip stitching. So then you'll be dealing with your peak stitch, 
and we're going to need to bridge it like always. So you'll chain five and slip stitch in that chain one space. Then you'll chain five and slip stitch in that chain one space. And then you'll do your chain three. And keep on slip stitching and doing your chain three. Okay. This is row 16 that I'm showing you now. Yeah, so this is row 16, not row 17. We're bridging over all our, our gaps and stuff. Sorry if this is so confusing for you. I'm going to definitely make sure on the video that I write down the row so you can ignore me if I say it wrong. So again, you're going to chain three until you chain three and slip stitch in your chain two, which will bring you up to your bridge here. Then you'll chain five and slip stitch in the chain one and chain five, slip stitch in the chain two. And again, you made it to that chain two again. so. We're going to switch to our chain three and slip stitch until we chain three and slip stitch in our next chain two. Chain three. Okay, now I'm slip stitching in my chain two. Now we're going to bridge the gap again or bridge our uh, peak, sorry, by doing our chain fives and slip stitching in our chain one and then in our chain two. And now we're at our chain two again here, so we're going to do our chain threes and start slip stitching in our chain threes. And this is the end of the row. So you're just going to chain three and slip stitch until you can't anymore chain three and slip stitch and again you're not having to worry about doing it on the bottom anymore even on your repeat don't worry about it but you uh, you'll be doing on four so you won't have to have to worry about it so that's the end of 16 so this will be row 17 and the end of our repeats so chain three as usual and turn Okay, so I'm going to just slip stitch in my first chain three. And I'm going to continue to chain three and slip stitch. Until I reach my, uh, my first chain five space here. And then again, you'll do your chain two and start working your four double crochets. You have got to have gotten the pattern down by now, right? <laughs> you do your double cro four double crochets, chain one, and then four double crochets. It really is easy, though it, uh, I make it seem so much more complicated, I think. <laughs> then you'll chain one, and then in the next chain five space, you'll start your second. three, then chain one, two, three, and four. That's our second one. This is our first, that's our second. So now we're done with both our peaks. So you'll be chaining two this time and then slip stitch in the next chain three space. Then you're gonna chain three and slip stitch until you reach your next chain five, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and oh, okay, I'm at my uh, chain five space, so I only need a chain of two, not three, so I have a chain two now, 
and then you'll work your peaks just like you did before. Chain one. Two, three, four, chain one, one, two, three, four, chain one, and then one, two, three, and four, and then chain two slip stitch in your chain three and then again you'll start your chain threes until you reach your chain five again and you're going to continue to do this pattern over and over again now I did from my pattern here I say to repeat uh, rows 14 through 17 for three sets And I just, I just guessed three sets because I was doing this with thinner yarn, and it was, uh, it was acting a little different. It got to be where it was. Let me back up a little bit. It was getting to where it was getting a little bit too, too wide. You know, like uh, it was getting too loose. Like it was too much yarn here. And I was guessing it started about three sets. And so that's when I started, when I showed you before on those three chain five spaces, where you had, uh, you know, before this top peak area here, it was back on, it's row 14. So after you repeat rows 14 through 17 a few times, and, and you notice that maybe it's getting a little bit too big, if it's not, then you can just continue, you don't have to change a thing. But if you do realize that it's starting to get a little wider or too, too much here, then I recommend on row 14 that you don't uh, do three sets of chain five, you just do one, which means that you'll be doing chain three and then you'll slip stitch in your chain five, then you'll chain three, slip stitch in your next chain five, and then you'll chain five and slip stitch in your chain five, which will give you your peak area here where you'll be working this on next time. Then you'll chain three, do it on the chain five, chain three, and then just continue to do chain three until you reach back up to here again, where you'll reach your next chain five, which then you can do chain three. And then from now on, you'll only have one chain five here, and the rest will all be chain threes. And it'll be easier for you too on that row, because it'll just be chaining three until you reach your chain five, and then you'll do your peak stitch, and then it'll all be chain threes. Could be easier for you, and you'd prefer that anyway. But it just depends on your yarn. If it works out for you and you don't feel like this is getting too big, then you don't have to change a thing. Just keep repeating rows 14 through 17 until you reach your desired size. Um, but if you want to make the hood, which I'm sure you do, right? In time, by the way, as it gets bigger and heavier, this part here will flatten out. It won't be... And it may also be why these kind of gotten a little wider because this, as it gains, it starts to pull this way and it makes it look like these need to be pushed in a little bit more. So by switching and making those, you reduce a little bit on each peak by two stitches. So it actually helps it, you know, lay down flatter. And you'll be doing your hood on this top portion of your shawl. Um, I did it after, I believe it was three full sets, so I was on row, I was after row uh, 32, it was about that size that I needed, and I did not mark this and this last stitch here which I should have because uh, later on uh, I accidentally reduced it by some and I had to make up for it uh, using some of my yarn 
So I very much recommend that you get two markers and mark these last, at least, you know, the width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more yarn and I'm going to get my markers and mark my very last two chain three spaces here. And then I will show you how I started my hood. Okay, so let me get my... So I, like I said, um, given that I'm using one of these, one of these, and I wanted to keep my color going evenly on the hood and whatnot, and I'll show you here, I got through most of my, my white to make just the beginning start of it, and I actually started getting into the gray area, and this is where I was when I reached my row like my piece was this small oh, I should probably back out so you can see a little bit better Ugh. it was this small whenever I started my hood and then I just you know did a little bit of it you know, I think about five rows and then I switched back over to my shawl pattern again until I had another color change and then I added about you know think four or five rows of the next color and then I mean there's no rule you can you can change every uh, time there's a color change you can you can change every other color change it's however you want to do it but uh, remember you have just so much yarn so you have to kind of judge it as best as you can so I recommend you can measure some the person that you want to make it for this is like a an older teen, and my daughter's 11, uh, so I'm guessing this is like a young teenage, older child size, fits her perfectly. You can measure how wide this is. You can put this part, like I did this, I put it, I grabbed my daughter and was like, here, hold still. I got my shawl and put her head in like this, just to see how, how it falls, like here, and if it was too much, I just did a few more rows until this hood part was about the size that she needed to go completely around her head and then I thought okay that's good that's the width I probably need and then I marked put two markers or I should have put two markers <laughs> I didn't I thought I didn't need to worry about it because there's nothing else after that so I don't think I would need to be confused but this stuff pulls and it gets surprisingly difficult later on so in your very last chain three spaces I recommend to put and leave those there too even move them up as you do your hood just to make sure you're not going to do what I did so you want to cut your yarn sorry about the noise there's a construction over there so I always like to leave a little bit of a tail when I change colors because I want to get a tapestry needle and hide that tail later so it doesn't show. Working over it does not seem to do very well, especially for lacy patterns like this. You definitely want to leave that tail so that you can uh, later on can work it in. Okay, let me move my, let me get to that part of the hood. Okay, so we're going to be using a single crochet attachment. So I'm going to go right into this very first chain three space where I marked and I'm going to pull up a loop then yarn over and pull through two loops. That's how I attach my yarn. Now we're going to be working across the top of our stitches here. Um, so you want to chain one and then single crochet in the next side stitch and then chain one says the next six stitches so that would have been one stitch so I'm going to do this five more times so I'm going to find the next space here I can get into single crochet chain one gonna help if you spread it out a little bit find the next space here single crochet chain one single crochet chain one then there's a big space here says uh, single crochet chain one the next six spaces 
So I had this one and I got I only got four this time, so that's not good. Let me back out. Oh wait, this is a this is a, a shorter one. So you it may take you less if you're doing a smaller one. It may take you more. But I do think I'm going to go ahead and put one on this next side. I am chaining one, so essentially it's like two stitches. Just enough to get you to that first side of your big one here without really pulling or anything. Just keep it as evenly as you can. Single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. Okay, so um, it says you'll skip the first stitch and single crochet and chain one in the next and then repeat this one more time. So I guess we're going to just straight up single crochet, chain one, and this one, and then skip the middle one, and then single crochet and chain one. This is skip a stitch uh, and slip stitch in the large space. Oh, okay. Ah, so it's a chain one. So I guess on the side stitches here where I had the double crochets, just put one single crochet, chain one, and then this big old space in between here. Little single crochet, chain one, and then in this big space there, on the next side of your double crochet your uh, single crochet chain one and then the big space here single crochet chain one just trying to keep it as even as you can yours may be more flatter you may want to back out a little bit the idea is not to try to get it exactly like I'm doing it but trying to get it as evenly as you can and the big spaces here the sides of the double crochets just want to put one single crochet chain one then move over to the next space and then here I'm um, another big old space here I'm just going to single crochet chain one then this brings me to the very little center let me just see what I say here single chain single crochet continue single crochet and chain one and all the large side stitches too uh, until you reach the next chain five space again now you do the same only in reverse so I'm just putting a single crochet and chain one in the center of that too so I'm just gonna keep in each space here single crochet chain one single crochet chain one then I'm going to my big space here single crochet chain one then there's another big side double crochet there too just trying to keep them as evenly as I can and this is very short so if you didn't get it right here just rip it out until you can get it all even with your single crochet chain ones all along the top I had 64 stitches you may have more you may have less don't panic this isn't rocket science you don't have to have it perfect okay so I single crocheted in the very last one now where I have my marker here so that was just the first one now it's just going to be a, a repeat of row two so once you have everything good and golden and everything straight then from now on you'll just be chaining three and turning and then in your chain one spaces that you made you'll slip stitch so just chain three find your next chain one space and slip stitch chain three next one slip stitch and after row two if it looks flat if it looks good then you will want to continue to do that over and over again if not then rip it out and uh, try to maybe space out your single crochets a little bit better it's just up to you so all I'm doing is just chaining three and slip stitching in my chain one space 
and like I said it's going to look different just because this is curved mine was not curved when I did this my cotton yarn was much heavier and it took me a little bit more time to reach the width before I started my hood just because um, the yarn is thinner it's like thread like fingerling size so I kinda went off measuring my daughter by putting it on her head like I showed you until because I wanted to use the least amount of yarn that I could because I knew it was going to be tight mm, I didn't chain one here oh well I'll just do it in between so great thing about this chaining three and putting it in the chain one space doesn't really matter so much at the start once you got your chain threes in place though they're very defined and if you uh, just have your marker there then you won't mess up like I did okay so you can move your marker up to the very last chain three space here which I recommend doing so you're gonna want to do at least you know five rows or so just with the original color so I chain three to start my next row and I'm gonna mark move my marker now to this to that one that's clearly defining that's the last and I shouldn't have to move it but you can still curved but remember yours will be more like this just make sure it fits right on the head and that it's good and wide enough and then when you do your last chain three on this side move this red marker that move this marker on this side up and then after that it's just chain three chain three and uh, slip stitching to make the hood and just you know cut your yarn every time you have a decent uh, color change and add it to the hood that way you have this uh, I may have to show you a picture here you may see it better than just trying to show you on camera like this you can see how you slowly can make the color change like this match the uh, color change on the end but it's all on uh, the yarn that you're using if you're not using one of these yarn cakes like I am maybe your color change will be different so you can just whatever you want and I did uh, I think my hood might have been a little longer just because uh, I didn't know how many of uh, the, the rows of the color change that I would need before I reached the end of my yarn and in the end I still didn't it was, it was getting too long and I still had another color change I could add so I just decided well it's too long and I'm just gonna sew it and then since I messed up I put the rim around the side of the hood well I have the hood right here I don't know why I'm explaining it like that this see I got on this end but my hood was getting so long that I decided I needed to just stop so all I did was just got my hood piece here move out of the way I got my hood and I just folded my hood in half like this and then got my yarn and as evenly as I could I single crocheted it's just single crochet to sew it all together as evenly as you can and remember you want to do this on the inside of the shawl not the outside that you want to show because you want that sewing part to be on the inside so that no one can see this little ridge so just make sure what side you're on when you fold your uh, your hood in half and you're ready to sew it so once you do get it all sewn and I look like I did maybe four of each color change then I think I started reducing it some no I did about four each row of my color change and it was a it was a bit much but my hood all together second did I write that down so I got my measuring tape out here I'll add it to the pattern too but uh, it's probably backwards for you but measuring it from the end to this row where I started it's about um, it stretches so it's really hard to measure it but it's about 33 I would guess 32 33 
which is about 13 inches, something like that, which is really long <laughs> for a hood. It's hard to, to guess. That's why I made it too long, I think, is because it stretches when you put it on, and it was longer than I originally thought it would. So maybe uh, do your color changes every three rows you could try. And, and then until it reaches, I would guess, I would think 10 inches would be enough because it does stretch. So that one I'm just going to have to, to leave to you because that's, that's a difficult one. I would say at least make it uh, 10, 11 inches for the hat. I mean for the hood. Leave yourself about that much so you can estimate how many rows you'll need for your color change based on um, 10 to 11 inches how much you decided that you wanted to go that way you can guess every three inches about every row is about uh, a centimeter so you for me anyway so you can just guess three centimeters through rows and guess how much that would be depending on how many color changes you have so if you did want to add a border here like I did on the side because I needed to make up the, the depth is I just marked it on either side the very last row see you can see the row is more clearly defined so you just need to mark it right there on the ends of each side of this row where your hood is and then you can just do what you did here just chain three and mark I mean and go into each side stitch chain three next side stitch and then when you get to the end of your row do this like you did here chain three turn and just keep going back and forth I did uh, one two three four five five six rows I did six rows of this color just to make it deep enough before I ran out of uh, enough yarn which I had a very small amount left and I just used to make these um, tassels which I have a tassel video if you if you need to know how to make a tassel then uh, I'll leave that link down below and you can do that remember that I did it after a row where I had just a single um, peak stitch so I did my single peak and then I ended it and then I added tassels to the end just to help pull that section down a little bit more, add a little bit more texture. So I hope this tutorial wasn't too confusing and that you can follow along. I'm going to update my pattern, make sure that it's right. It has plenty of pictures. I hope that it will help you uh, be able to make this beautiful afghan. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and share. It helps me out so much. And if you click on the little bell button next to the subscribe button on my main YouTube page, you'll always be notified whenever I release a new video. Also, I have two groups on Facebook, one called Crochet Zone Public and the other is Crochet for the Masses. Crochet Zone Public is anything crochet for sale or not. Uh, and the Crochet for the Masses is more of a private one. So if you prefer that, then uh, go there. Uh, also, I have a group Pinterest board where I have a lot of designers. It's called Melodora's Community uh, Pinterest board and you can find the link down below and you can always find free patterns there. Are no spam and I really encourage if you like Pinterest and you've been having difficulty with spam that you'll go there and check it out and bookmark it because it's a really good place to find free patterns even posted by the designers themselves. Uh, another thing is I now have a newsletter and uh, whenever I have something new that's come out that week I will update you through a newsletter so you'll never miss anything uh, that I released that week. So that's it guys. Thank you so very much for watching.